<laughs> what is up, Crackhead Nation? It is your girl, Princess Galaxy, and I'm quarantining. <laughs> I'm quarantining and I'm vibing. So today I wanted to talk to you guys about something that has been on my mind for a long time. I know I'm in a different set. I know I'm in a different environment. This is what my room looks like. I'm watching Marcus Brown Lee, king of technology. I'm from Michigan, so we have kind of like a stay at home thing we need to follow and all like barber shops and you know, hair places and nail places are closed until I believe like the middle of April. So, Either I'm gonna have to braid my hair again myself, which I don't wanna do, or I'm just gonna sit here and look as moisturized as humanly possible with my natural hair out, which I don't mind, but sometimes it can just be a little irritating. Okay, so today I kinda want to talk about something that has been on my mind for a while and something that you guys have been asking me time and time again. It's basically being a black K-pop fan and how has that kind of just affected me and my experience with my community, like as you know, being black in America and things like that. What really prompted this was last month I was I was on Twitter and I saw a tweet basically saying something along the lines of this again. Maybe I can find it. I'm looking for the tweet, I'm looking for the tweet, I'm looking for the tweet, I'm looking for the tweet. Okay, here's the tweet. Wow, it's like a month old. <laughs> I should have made this video already. But it basically said, has anyone ever told you you aren't really black because you like Korean culture? And I saw that and I said, the T on the TL is hot today. And then I responded to that tweet basically being like, thinking about making a video about this, but I feel like nobody would care. I got a bunch of tweets back basically being like, yes, please talk about this like right now because like, you know, when I put on Instagram, you guys wanted me to talk about it. So we gonna talk about it. So I don't have a script for this video. Usually when I make videos, even if they're like kind of opinion based videos, I usually have a script. Um, I don't. Um, <laughs> so this is coming from my 14 day quarantine brain. So I'm just gonna talk. So I wanna give you guys a background about me because I feel like a lot of people don't really like know who I am. So especially if you're watching this video for the first time, hi, my name is Princess and I have been a huge fan of K-pop since I believe 2013 and I'm 21 right now. So that means I've been a K-pop fan for eight years, almost 10 years. Whoa, that bird scared the shit out of me. But it's been a long time. So I have had a lot of experiences where I just felt very unincluded in the black community because of my love of Korean culture. And I'm gonna tell you right now, some some people about to be mad. Y'all about to be real mad. Y'all about to <laughs> So when it comes to kind of like my past relationship with the, with the African American community, like what, like my community, like the black community, I've had years of constant struggle with feeling like I was a part of the black community and the big reason why was because of my love of free and pop culture and things like that. If you guys don't know, I went to a Christian private school, which was, I was the only black kid in my grade ever since sixth grade. And we, it was a very small school and it was very conservative and white and you know, there's nothing wrong with that. But, you know, with my situation, it just was not like a, a perfect equation, you know what I'm saying? So for me, it was kind of like I would go to school and I'd be too black for school. And then I would come home and my mom was very like, you know, very pro-black, you know, black power, uh, um, black culture, the only best culture in the world. And I'm just like, okay, I cannot relate to that. So I would go to school and I wouldn't be able to fit in with anyone. And then I would be coming home and I wouldn't be able to fit in with anyone. And the only, I remember like the only comfort I had, the only comfort or, you know, calmness I ever felt was driving to school. And I did that for like three years, like 10th grade, I got my first car. And it's like, you just really don't know where you fit in, especially if you're a black kid that likes K-pop because um, the, if I'm gonna be honest, the most like hate, I guess it wouldn't be hate, like I don't know, it's kind of a dramatic word, but the most backlash, I guess is a better word, that I've gotten from being um, like a black K-pop fan, you know, just me being me, hasn't been from like other people, like like other nationalities or ethnicities, like white people or Caucasian, I'm not, 
you know what I mean? Or like even Asian, like the Koreans, I know they love that I love K-pop and stuff like that. But it's always been the African American community. And for me, it just doesn't make any sense because I thought, but okay, listen, I'm thinking, you know, the whole point of being, I don't know how to say this, but it's like the black community always talks about how individuality and being your own boss and being yourself is like so important. But when I actually am expressing myself and having love and true passion for like another aspect of another culture, it's like wrong. It's like, what are you doing? It's like, they want, it's like, it's like certain black people want your black experience to be what they want your black experience to be. Not what you actually feel in your heart that you want. Because if I would listen to like most of the black people in my life that tell me, like my family members that tell me that I don't know what I'm doing or that um, Koreans don't care about you or that you shouldn't be listening to that music, you should be listening to more black music. Like whatever that means, that's, that's his own thing and its own whole field. But the simple fact that they say this stuff, it's just, it makes no sense. It's like the black experience is not just one thing. The black experience is multiple experiences. My, it's just like being a human being. My experience is not going to be the exact same as yours. And I think that's the black experience. I honestly feel like a lot of people don't want to be directly associated to the black experience. Because when you talk about the black experience with someone, it's never a good thing. It's always something negative, like, oh, like, we're oppressed. Oh, we will. It's like, why can't we make the Black experience positive, different things? Why can't the Black experience be, you know, like, a Black girl traveling the world and being herself? Why can't a, the Black experience be um, a Black man, you know, like, making something of himself and, like, you know, like, doing something like weird, you know, that's not traditional to the black experience. Like, I think that would be amazing. And once the black community starts accepting young black people, especially young black people who like Asian things, um, and this applies to probably different people of color that aren't like Eastern Asian or Asian in general. I don't know how to say it without just sounding so like confusing. I think a lot of it has to do with creating your own black experience. And if the black community as a whole doesn't acknowledge that that young black people want to create different experiences for themselves and not just like conform to traditional black things, then the black community is going to stay where it is. Because it's like it's like almost every other culture is like cool with it. Like I I have seen I have been around so many different types of people. And the only time I get backlash from, you know, liking like K-pop or like being obsessed with K-pop or enjoying K-pop, it's always from the black community. And it's just like, it's like, what do you want? Like, do you want me to express myself or do you just want to control my narrative? Because it doesn't actually seem like you want to, you know, expand the horizons of black people it seems like you're just afraid that if i enjoy another culture that i am going to not be black enough first of all this whole thing of being bl black enough that makes no sense whatsoever because at the end of the day um i was born with blackness and dark skin and i will die black as well um so that makes uh, no fucking sense at all like, who says that? You're not black enough. What? <laughs> what does that mean? Like, does that mean I don't struggle enough? Does that mean I don't like, what does that mean? Like, I just don't know. And it's like, it's like, it's like, what do we want? What do we really want as a culture, as a society? We live in a, <laughs> this video is so just fucked up and the, <laughs> Like, this video is just so unorganized. Like, I'm just like, oh my god. And I think, like, another thing that is really just sad is that, like, for me, I didn't know where I fit in. Like, I literally had no one to really talk to. 
Um, I tried to talk to my mom about it and then she would call like, she would call K-pop like Vietnamese and then I'd be like, mom, they're not Vietnamese. And then she'd be like, well, they're all white anyway. And I'm like, mom, they're not white, they are Asian. And then she'd be like, well, whatever, they're not black. And I'm just like, oh my God, stop being a boomer, ugh. Like for a long time, I just didn't want to be a part of like blackness because I thought blackness looked one way. And I really villainized a lot of black people in my life, but I think a lot of the feelings that they have aren't malicious. I think they just come from fear of, you know, like abandoning being black, you know? And I totally understand that. I mean, so much like black Americans, like we've been through so much, you know, our history and everything. But I think it's time that we let ourselves experience new things and experience new cultures and love on ourselves and our younger generations who want to do different things like i don't like obviously i still joke like oh like i'm the whitest person i know because i love like starbucks and the kardashians and taylor swift and stuff like that but if i'm being honest like i don't really understand you're too white for this you're too black for this you can't like, like, it's just, it's so old. It's so old. It's like, we live in the age of like the internet and all this shit. So it's like, and also when black people say, oh, you're, that's so white. Oh, that's so this, this and that. It's always a good thing. It's like, it's always like, oh, you have proper grammar. You're so white. What does that mean? Like, isn't that a good thing? Shouldn't I know how to speak English? And it's like, just because like I sound like this and like I don't have like, you know, like I don't sound like the rest of my family, you know, like I don't have like a hood accent. Like, I mean, I'm from the hood, but I don't, I just, that's not how I grew up. Like I grew up watching like Legally Blonde and stuff. Like, of course I'm gonna sound like this. Like shit, I grew up listening to like YouTubers like Jenna Marbles and I Justine, like, and you grew up watching like 106 in Park and shit and like that's totally dope. But that doesn't make me better or worse. And so it's just this whole thing of like, oh, you take care of yourself. Oh, you have money. You acting white. What does that mean? I don't know. This video don't make no sense. <laughs> this video don't make any sense. <laughs> Another thing that I wanted to say is that I remember like, you know, being in high school and then middle school and stuff like that, like you're very impressionable. And if people around you don't really like aspects of you or they deny certain aspects of who you are as a person, it can really emotionally damage you. And I don't think a lot of people talk about that. Um, I remember when I first started listening and watching K-pop, I loved 21. I thought they were so sexy and beautiful and gorgeous. And like, obviously I'm bi, so like at that time I was, struggling with my bisexuality not struggling but you know christian private school and it was around the time of like gay marriage being legal in america which is iconic and i just remember just just feeling like when i listen to k-pop like i feel like something different than when i listen to other music like i feel like at home I don't know I feel comforted I feel like I'm not gonna be judged you know and it's just it's something that a lot of people can relate to but don't really know how to put in the words like me but like I said like I didn't grow up watching people on YouTube that look like me doing what I'm doing like I grew up watching like two men Jin Jong Ki Simon and Martina but that was like basically it and so like when I make videos like obviously I enjoy making videos and I enjoy going to different concerts. Like I saw Super M live and I went, I saw their tour and I just, I'll buy myself. Like I just went to see them and I was like, okay. And I love like seeing your guys' comments about like, you know, like, oh, I'm a black girl too. And like, I love seeing you like, you know, do shit. And like, that's why, like, it's not just for me. Like obviously I make videos because I enjoy them even though I don't have a consistent upload schedule. I'm sorry, I'm supposed to come out with videos every Friday but sometimes that don't happen. <laughs> even though I really enjoy like making videos and I love, you know, like talking to you guys, interacting with you guys in comments and like laughing and just loving you guys so much. Like I do it for 
the black girl who doesn't, who can't see themselves doing like things that they love yet. You know, it's like, I've always dreamt of doing the things that I do. And like, you know, like even having a YouTube channel, like I only have 7,000 subscribers, but like, it's crazy. Like that's 7,000 people that were like, yeah, you know, I think I like this, <laughs> you know, like that's crazy. And so I just, it's not just about me. It's about helping you guys create new experiences. Like, I don't care what culture you're from. I don't, even if you're white and people make fun of you for like K-pop, like, I, well, you watch this whole thing. So apparently you must relate to it in some way. But I want this to be a space where like, you can just like be yourself. Like, I know it sounds really corny, but it's like, this is just me being me. You're not getting like a character. I'm in quarantine, so all my thoughts are scattered as hell. But I wanted to make this video because I know a lot of people are probably going through this. I, maybe not, I don't know. But I feel like this is something that a lot of people don't talk about. And I feel like we don't like talking about it because as the black community, like we're kind of taught to like kind of stick together and like just if someone's doing something you don't like, just be quiet or you know, something like that. Like don't, you know, like keep it in the family, I guess. I don't know, but I just, I just don't like that. Like. It's like if I see something and I feel like something's not right, like I've been thinking of this stuff for years, but it's like I've never heard anyone really say it. And um, I just kind of wanted to get on here and say that if you're going through the same thing, you're not alone. The main principle behind me quitting and dropping out of school is the same one for me not giving a shit about people, what people think about me liking K-pop. Is that at the end of the day, when I go to sleep, I want to be comfortable. I want to have that emotional security that I'm doing what I feel is right in my life. I'm enjoying what I enjoy. I'm not doing something just to make the masses happy. I'm not doing something just to make a few people in my life more comfortable. Like literally, fuck that. And I love doing what I do. I love YouTube. I love making videos about K-pop concerts. Like it literally just gives me so much life. It fulfills me to maximum capacity. <laughs> and that word is so disgusting. Like fills me to maximum capacity. Like <laughs> me and my boyfriend, ew, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry. But basically I just wanted to come on here and just talk to you guys. It's a very candid moment right now. And um, yeah, I love you guys so much. If you guys are going through it, currently right now like you're in school don't really appreciate like what you enjoy and stuff like that just remember that just don't give a fuck keep doing you love yourself do what you want who cares at the end of the day it's about you and your heart and what you feel and if you feel that it's right to love what you love and to enjoy what you enjoy and be attracted to asians then go ahead <laughs> all right guys i love you so much have a great rest of your day Happy quarantine. <laughs> Sun is down. Freezing cold. That's how they already know when it's here. Um, I could probably do it for a Louis Bell. That's just all he know. He knows. <laughs> I tried to show him. <laughs>